and the sun at the bottom. So. Exactly.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Together let us say, Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan didst proclaim him thy beloved Son and anoint him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with thee in the same Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Let us now say responsively by half verse the portion of Psalm 29 in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. 
The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And in the temple of the Lord, the Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord shall give strength to his people. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and I'm my redeemer. <clears throat> the 
The gospel opens this morning with a focus on the baptism of Jesus. Luke pictures John the Baptist as an end-time prophet who announced that the apocalypse was about to occur that would end the present evil age and fully bring about the realm of God, a new world in which all things would be righted. The people were wondering if John was the one who was the Messiah, the one to come to issue in the new age. He called on people to repent and be baptized so they could be a part of the new era of peace and harmony. According to Luke, however, John is not the one through which the transformation would take place. The coming one, Jesus, will baptize the community with the Holy Spirit and fire and will carry out the final judgment. It is easy to understand why they looked to John to try and determine if he was the one. He was a very fiery preacher who boldly proclaimed the kingdom that was to come. He warned people of their need to repent of their sins. He denounced the sinful nature that was rampant and evil done by those in power. He held back nothing of the state of the world, and that was his downfall with the powers that ruled at that time. He warned that I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful, and I am not worthy to even untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. John felt that no one could serve God more than in his daily work, and he was certain that he was only the forerunner. The Savior was still to come, and with him would come judgment. The winnowing fork was a large, flat, wooden fork, and with it, the grain would be tossed up into the air, and the good grain, the heavy grain, would fall to the ground, but the chaff was blown away. And just as the chaff was separated from the grain, so the one to come would separate the good from the bad. John painted a picture of judgment, but a judgment that a person could meet if he did his duty to care for his neighbor. We aren't told in Luke's gospel if Jesus was baptized by John, but we are told that when all the people were baptized and Jesus was also baptized and was praying the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. That image of the Spirit descending and the voice of our Creator is very affirming to me for my faith. Church history shows us that generations of people have been anticipating the second coming. Even St. Paul thought that Jesus would return within his lifetime to right all the wrongs. And here we are, the church, over 2,000 years later, still anticipating the coming of our Lord. It seems that all humanity continues to wait, hopeful, for someone to come and right all the injustices and deliver us from all the evil and turmoil of the world. For many of us, the world has become a very scary place. Terrorist attacks are happening around the globe. Wars continue to be fought. Demonstrations and assaults 
on our own government, natural disasters, mistrust of the other. As we all seek to find solutions to what ails our country and our wider world, people are divided over what is the best way to solve all that is wrong. In a world that is desperate for answers, for solutions to all the problems that face us on a daily basis, we need to remember that we are the people of God, that Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Through our faith and our baptismal covenant, we need to feel empowered to carry out the work of the Lord in a world that is desperate for answers to what ails us. Despite all the disorder and contention in our world, God is still with us. God's Son has shown us the way as we face the challenges ahead. We need to remember that the world has always faced challenges. It's nothing new, but we know that it can be overpowering when so many things to be, seem to be happening in such a very short period of time. When fear takes over our lives, it stops us from doing what we know is right. Fear is our enemy. The virus has taken care of not taken hold of not only our country, but throughout the world. We need to continue to do all we can to stay safe while continuing to reach out into the world to those in need. We need to continue to pray for all the health care workers and caregivers that continue to work to treat those suffering from the virus and from other ailments. We need to continue to support our teachers who are doing their very best to continue to educate our children under very trying circumstances. We need to continue our in-gathering for the food pantry and the caring place and to help so many in need. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith tells us that with God's help, we can overcome fear while still being safe. We put our trust in his love and in his grace. This is the central message of baptism, the old being buried with Christ in baptism, and the new creation has been resurrected. No trial or tribulation that we face can separate us from the love of God. Let us continue to have faith and continue to reach out and touch others with a sense of his love and presence so that they too will feel what we do with our knowledge that Christ is our Savior. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again 
according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, our bishops, and the reverend clergy of this parish active and retired, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, and to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our president and our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. In thy Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. In thy and we most humbly beseech thee, of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor especially Laura Themen, Bonnie Bowman, Porter Phillips, Tony Pearson, Patsy Densford, Beth Gleason, Blake West, Wally Red, Bog McFarland, and all those whom we now name either silently or aloud. and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We give thee hearty thanks and pray for those who celebrate their birthday this week. Alex Miller, Mary Jane Moore, Patty Moyer, Blake West, Bill Dodd, Lynn Grant, Katie Sabanius, Jack Marshall, Linda Ross, Ken Danton, Jared Mayle, Diane Nagy. And for those who celebrate their anniversary this week, Todd and Christy Mance. Lord, in thy mercy, 
strengthen and protect our armed forces in every peril of sea, land, and air. Shelter them in the day of battle, and in peace keep them safe from all evil. And do them with loyalty and courage, and grant that in all things they may serve as in seeing thee. Lord, in thy mercy. And we humbly beseech thee, O Lord, to guide and enlighten, and enlighten the staff, teachers, and students of Grace Episcopal School. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear, especially Chris Kilgard, Barbara Yoikis, Jack Sadler, Francis Mulock, Lyle Raper, Scholar Larry, Hannah Case, Peter Oliver, Max Reynolds, Jeremiah Williams, and all those whom we now name. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Next Sunday is our annual meeting. We will have a hybrid annual meeting this year. We will have uh, the meeting in the parish hall at 1230 after the 11 o'clock service next Sunday. And we will also have an option to log in via Zoom and participate in the meeting. So if you're unable to return to church that day, you're most welcome to join us online for that. 
At that meeting, we'll be electing new vestry members for the coming year, and we'll be electing delegates to the Council of the Diocese of Texas. So we will be electing, we'll be doing the business of the church year, we'll be electing those who will continue to do the business of the church year, and electing those who do the business of the church year at the diocesan level. So please do join us for that. We'll also have some information about uh, the progress of our West Campus Permanent Home Project and some other info about what's to come at Grace. So please do be there. Do we have any other announcements before our blessings? <clears throat> do we have blessings for birthdays or anniversaries or travel? Which category? Ah, uh, okay, Arkansas. <coughs> Travel? Uh, Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> Relatively far. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, as these your servants venture from us, we pray that you would give your holy angels charge over them to keep them safe in their travels. At the end of their journeys, bring them safely home to us. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Safe travels. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is 
It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him 
And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 